What's up you data friends, it's Yanis here and welcome to my channel. Now please note that this video is actually video part 2. In these two videos, part 1 and part 2, we go through an Excel test that businesses use in order to assess the data analyst knowledge of Excel before they offer them a job. In video part one, we've covered the first six tasks. So our data set now looks something like this. So I suggest watching the first video first before you watch this one. I also have these two files into my GitHub repo in the link in the video description, just in case you want to follow this test through. And before we jump into this video, if you're passionate about data analytics and data science, then please click the like button, subscribe to my channel, and enable notifications for my future videos. Right, starting from where we left it in the previous video, task number seven says create a new column that has above average or below average text, depending on the total value. So we want to compare this total value with another value and show whether it's above average or below average. Now, it's not super clear with which value we should compare this total value, which is something you're gonna get in your test. It's not always going to be super clear on exactly what you need to do. So you're gonna have to choose which value you want to compare with this average. It could be the average value per movie and per month, which is going to be this value down here, 136,000. Or it could be the average of the totals, which is this value down here, 956,000. Now, it makes more sense to me to compare the total value of the show with the average total value of all shows. So if it was me, I was going to do something like this. Calculate the average of the totals. So I was going to do equals average and then select my totals. So this should give me a value of 956 as we see it down here. And then I was going to create an if statement saying equals if open brackets, this value is bigger than this value comma, above average, comma, value if false, by the way, you can see value if true. So if the total is more than the average, then we want above average. But if it's not, value if false, we want to have below average. And then close brackets, click enter. So you can see the first one, because this value is bigger than this value, we have above average. And then if we double click, we can see that this one is also above average, but everything else is below average. However, this is not correct because this value is actually bigger than this value. So we've done something wrong. If we check the formula for this one, you can see that it's comparing this value with this cell over here, which doesn't make any sense. So what we needed to do in the first formula was to lock this value down here. So if I click on O1 and then click F4, it's actually going to lock it. So when I drag the values down, it's not going to move to the next cell. Now, if I double click again, you can see that this value now is above average because it's comparing the correct cells. And this value down here is above average, but this is the total, so we don't want to have this cell. Next, I want to make this look nicer, so I want to make this bigger. Here, I want to name it as above or below average. Then I want to make this a bit bigger so everything is visible. I want to hide this value so I don't want this value to be visible. So I can actually move it somewhere down here in the totals and I can make it white so it's not visible. There we go. So now we don't see it. Then I can expand my title as we've shown in the previous video. And I can also select everything and add the borders. So if I go back, you can see everything is on borders. Something else I should show you is that we can make this smaller, but we can increase the size of the titles. We can select all the titles and we can click on wrap text. 
and this is actually gonna try and fit it into this space however i don't think this looks nice so i'm gonna go back and back and leave it as it was down here i want to put this in the middle and i also want to conditionally format this so we can straight away see what's above and what's below average but instead of creating a rule because i'm under time pressure 15 minutes what i was going to do is that i was going to manually select these three and click on good and then i was going to manually select the rest and then click on but now because this is manual if we get new data these are not going to update but because this is a one-off and i'm under pressure I was going to quickly do it like this instead of creating rules for conditional formatting which is something we've shown in the previous video right moving on the next task says join the distributor from part two which is here this new column should be seven next to moving so it should be over here so what we need to do now is to create a new column so we can right click and click insert this new column is going to be the distributor. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it here as the title name. And then we need to use a VLOOKUP in order to join the distributor, which is this one over here. And what they want to test here is that they want to test if you are able to join columns together. So to bring data from one sheet into another based on another column. So this in our case is moving. So what we want to type here is equals the lookup, then open brackets. We want to look up this value, comma, from this column. So I'm just going to select all of this. Then I want to lock this down. So when I drag the formula into the next cells, this selected table is not going to move down with the drag. So I'm going to click F4 and you can see it added the dollar signs so this table is now locked then i want to click comma and then two because i want to bring in the second column and then comma zero because i don't want an approximate match i want an exact match and then close brackets click enter and as you can see for the transformers we have the paramount pictures and then if I double click this now, it's actually going to work fine because it's looking into the same table. It's not moving down each time I drag the values like this. And if I go back here now, these totals, it doesn't mean anything. So I'm going to remove it and then I'm going to make this column smaller. Right, moving on to the next task, it says create a pivot table showing the sum and average values for distributors. So I'm actually going to move this on the top right now because I'm going to use the space below to create the pivot table. So pivot tables are very important when it comes to data analytics and they want to test your knowledge if you know how to use them. So what I need to do first is to select the data set I'm going to put in the pivot table or I'm going to use to create the table. So I'm actually going to use all the data set without the totals because pivot tables create the totals themselves. Then I go into insert and then I click on pivot table and I want to create it in an existing sheet. So I'm actually going to put it down here. So I click exactly where I want to put it instead of a new worksheet, which is going to open a new worksheet. So I click OK and now I have my pivot table and in the task, it was saying that they wanted to see the sum and average value for distributors. So I'm going to drag distributors into rows. There we go. We only have uh, how many? Seven distributors. And then I'm going to drag the sums. So the totals, which is summing the values by distributor. And then I want to add the average too. Next, I want to make this look nicer. So I'm actually going to select my values, go into home and then make these dollars. Same as this sums remove the decimal places and there we go i think it looks fine so just to confirm again is the sum and averages by distributor this is the sum and this is the average by distributor you can actually make this nicer by changing the colors if you wish so something like this and something like this you can also change the title names if you want but because you are under pressure because you need to finish this in 15 minutes 
I think that's good enough. One thing I also do in pivot tables, just before we move on, is that I select one value and I test if those aggregations are actually correct. So if we select the 20th century fox and the rows that it's aggregating is actually this one, this one, and this one. And then if we check the sums, so it should sum this value, this value, and this value is returning 75. I don't know if you can actually see this because I'm also here, but if I do the sum quickly, it calls sum. So one, two, three, and then I close this. It's a number of 75, which is actually the same number. And then the average should be equals average. And then this value, this value, and this value, and then I close. We can see, oh, sorry, the average is actually a different column. So if I, if I see the field list, I can see that I'm using the average. So this average should be this value, this value, and this value. So if I click on my average again, I should do uh, this value, this value, and this value, and then I close brackets. It should be 3591, but it's not that. And this is because I'm actually summing these three values. Because if I do sum these values, then I'm going to get the 10774. So what I need to do is that I, I should click on the pivot table, click here where I have the average, and then in the value fields, I should change this to average. You can see we do get more options like count, max, mean, and then more options down here. But in our case, we need the average. So now we have the same number as this one. So it's always good to confirm the numbers in your pivot tables before you move on, just to make sure they are doing the correct aggregations. Right, moving on, the next task we have is to create a horizontal bar chart showing the totals by movie. So we want to select the movies first. Let me make this bigger. We select the movies and then we click control and we select the totals, which is this column over here, just to make sure I have both selected. Then I go into insert over here and then I can either click on recommended charts and all charts, just to see all the charts, or I can click into the charts from here. So in my case, I'm going to add this vertical one just to show you how we can change it. And then if we right click here and we click on change chart type, we can go into the bar chart and we can add this horizontal bar chart. We can also add the data levels. So if we right click over here and we click add data levels, we have the values. If we want to remove them, we can just click on them and then click delete. I'm just going to add them back quickly and we can also change the colors by right click on the colors, the data field to something greeny, for example, and we can also add a title and this is going to be the totals um, by movie. There we go. Right, moving on to the next task. If I put this over here, it says create a vertical bar chart showing the average value by genre. Now, this is a bit 3D because it's not exactly the same as the previous one, but we're going to repeat the same process so I can show you what's wrong with the same process as before. So if I select genre now, which is this one over here, and then the average, it was, it was the average, right? Let me check. Uh, showing the average. Yeah, correct. And then I go into insert and then I do the vertical, which is this one over here you can see that action is actually being repeated a lot of times. Action, action, same with adventure, adventure, adventure. And it's not what we want. We want to aggregate the data first and then create this visual. Now, in order to aggregate data quickly, we've shown before that pivot tables are the best thing. So what we can do is to create quickly a pivot table that has the average values by genre and then from that pivot table, we can create the visual. So I can either recreate the pivot table as we've done before, or I can copy this existing one, paste it down here quickly. Then I can switch in the rows, I can remove the distributor and I can add the genre. And then I can remove the sum and leave the average only. 
So now we have the average value as the task requires. So the average value by genre, but instead of having a pivot table, I can actually select this and make it as a visual. So if I click over here and then this one, you can see now from this pivot table, we created this visual that has, I know it says total here, but it's actually the average. So I'm actually gonna remove this and change the title into average by you. And then I wanna right click over here and remove all the fields. So we don't see those. I wanna move this average by you. Sorry, it should be average by you by genre. Then I can add it here. I can right click into the visuals and add the data labels. So we see the values and I can also change the colors into, I don't know, something orangey like this. Right, and the last task we have, it says create a visual, sorry, create a pie chart showing the average value by distributor. So it's exactly the same process as before. We're gonna need a new pivot table. So we're gonna copy this pivot table, paste it down here again. And instead of having the, it doesn't show up. Why does it show up? There we go. And instead of having the genre into rows, I'm gonna remove genre and add distributor. So now we have the average value by distributor. Then we need to select our pivot table. So click anywhere on the pivot table, click into insert, and now we need a pie chart, which is this one. And now I'm gonna change the title of this pie chart into average value by uh, distributor. And then I'm gonna right click over here and hide all fields. And then I can also play with the colors, so change the colors into specific colors I want. But if you don't have enough time, then you can leave the colors, sorry, average value by, by distributor. Um, but you can, as I said, if you're running out of time, you can leave the default colors. So if we zoom out now, because I'm on 150, so we can view all of our tasks. There we go, we have completed all the tasks. I know we took more than 15 minutes in these two videos, but I actually had to explain exactly how you do things and also give you more options. In a real case scenario, you're gonna know exactly what to do. So you won't have to present or explain, you're just gonna move through the tasks. Uh, just a quick recap now, just to show you what we have covered and why I selected these questions. If we zoom in again into the questions, the first question, as I said, they wanted to test your skills when it comes to cleaning the data and making the data presentable. The next two ones, they were trying to test if you know how to aggregate the data. The next one, they wanted to test if you know how to do the month over month changes and also how you make columns stand out by conditionally format. Task number six, they wanted to test if you know how to order the data, so highest to smallest or smallest to highest. Then they wanted to test if you know how to write if statements, so create new calculated columns. Next, they wanted to know if you know how to run the VLOOKUPs, so join data together. Next, they wanted to test if you know how to use pivot tables and also how to change the sums and the averages. And the last three questions, they wanted to test if you know how to create visuals, because as a data analyst, you will be creating a lot of visuals. And also they wanted to test if you know how to use both pivot tables and visuals together, because with pivot tables, you aggregate the data very quickly. And then with the visuals, it's a way of communicating your results with the business. Right, this is the end of these two videos. So I hope you've enjoyed the videos and you've gained enough value and now you can go on and practice these tasks on your own. See if you can finish them within 15 minutes. If you feel that you've gained enough value out of this video, then I would really appreciate it if you click the like button, subscribe to my channel and enable notifications for my future videos. Thank you very much for watching this video. I'm gonna see you in the next video.